Hello, this is Jack Rutland speaking uh, for Word of Hope Church for our Sunday night Easter service. And I just want to welcome you all here. I'm on Pastor Gene Aller's Facebook page. Uh, and I just want to encourage you that God will provide. God will provide for your needs. God will provide for what uh, you need in your life. So let's open with a word of prayer and then we'll begin with uh, what I want to talk to you about tonight. So Lord, we pray right now that we would just have a peace about us that uh, we would understand and realize that you are God and there, there is nothing found in your limitations. You don't have limitations, God. So we pray, Lord, that we would be strengthened and increased in our faith, that we would understand that you are who you say you are. God, I just pray we would have encouragement and confidence in who you are, God. Amen. So I want to talk to you tonight about the provision of God, about how God likes to show up in impossible circumstances and do miracles. So I want to start with a scripture that uh, is very popular. Uh, it's in Matthew, the sixth chapter, of verse 33. It says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. It says he will give you everything you need. Does that mean that God will string you along and give you one tiny little thing at a, thing at a time, like some kind of rude, mean master? He gives you one breadcrumb at a time, barely keeping you alive. That's not uh, the nature of God. When God created us, I, I always go back to the garden because that's... That was, that was God's original design. When I look at the garden, I think that is what God intended for our lives to be. And in the garden, there was no lack. There was no, uh, there was no hunger. There was no uh, famine, starvation, need. There was nothing like that. When you were hungry, you ate. When you had a need, you were provided for, uh, in Adam and Eve's case. So whenever I look at the garden, I see God's plan for my life. And in the garden... They had all their needs taken care of. They didn't, have, they didn't have shortages like we have today. There were no famines in the garden. There were no, uh, they didn't require clothes, but there was no clothing shortage. Uh, there, was no, there was no housing shortage. They had their needs fulfilled. They had their needs fulfilled. So God, I like to view God kind of as a father. And he is a father, but God, God, is a father because we're his children and he has made us in his image and he takes care of us. Now, some people were raised in difficult households where their parents didn't take care of them. So uh, maybe they've never experienced this, but good families, good fathers, good mothers take care of their children and provide for all their needs. Kids should not have to, you know, small kids should not have to worry about, am I going to eat tonight? Am I going to have shoes to wear tomorrow? Am I going to have a roof over my head tonight? Sometimes uh, tragedies and disasters happen to where these things just happen, but families that are capable of taking care of their kids do that, and God is very capable. God desires to meet the needs in your life, and he desires to meet them uh, to your fullest expectation. Let's look at what Philippians 4, 19 says. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. It says, The same God who takes care of Paul will supply all your needs from his glorious riches. He says he will take care of your needs. Does that mean that God will uh, kind of help you out here or there, or does that mean that God will make sure that you're provided for when you're trusting him? It means that he will make sure that you're provided for. Uh I've never been in any extremely major uh, financial need, or I've, and I've never been in any extremely major, uh, you know, need in my life. I've had a few situations that were kind of dodgy, but uh, a couple of years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said that you are going to go to Mozambique. You're going to go to Mozambique, Africa for about three months uh, to a missionary school. And I said, okay, that sounds great. Let's do it. Well, about three or four months before I was shipping out uh, on the plane to go to the school, I looked at all the resources that I would need, you know, all the finances that I would need to go and to pay for everything, and I was several thousand dollars short. 
I actually looked and said, if I save every single penny that I'm going to make in my salary uh, for the next uh, three months, I will still be several thousand dollars short. So I said, Lord, there's no way that I can pay for this. So I'm going to believe you uh, since you told me to go. You told me to go, so I'm going to believe you to cover the cost. Well, uh, a little money had already come in from various sources. So I, I was encouraged knowing that the Lord was going to take care of me there. But money just kept coming and coming and coming and coming. Uh, I had all, by the time that, of the, by the time of a few days before I left, all of the money had come in. I think it was two or three days before I left, the last of the money that I needed came in. And actually, a little more money came in than what I needed. Uh, I think it was maybe six, seven, eight hundred dollars more than what I needed for this trip. And none of it came out of my pocket. The Lord told me to go, and he didn't expect me to pay for it. He just expected me to believe for it. And he provided every single penny for this trip. And because I had more left over, for, from what the Lord provided for me, I was actually able to help other people go on their mission trips with that extra money. Uh, I met one or two people in, in Africa that were also at the school that were uh, going on mission trips after the school and they needed finances for this trip. So uh, I was able to provide and help them on that in that situation. So God provides when he, when he, when God says do something, he'll provide for it. And also God wants to provide for your needs. Uh, the righteous will be taken care of. When you follow the Lord, then he will take care of you. That's as simple as that. We're going to look at another scripture. It's Psalms 3410. Psalms 3410. It says, Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. It says, Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. According to the scripture, I will lack no good thing if I trust in the Lord. Now, if I don't trust in the Lord, if I don't put my trust in him, I may go with some lack. I may have some deficit going on. But it says, if I trust God, I will have my needs provided for. It also says uh, in the scriptures that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So it's this kind of, it's a little bit of a parallel, a parallel, uh, kind of thing where if I'm not trusting the Lord, I will come up short. If I am trusting the Lord, I will go above and beyond what I ever thought I could do in the first place. So I like, think about it this way. If you're a pet owner, you make sure that your dog or your cat or whatever it is, you make sure that they're taken care of, right? They have food. They have uh, all the stuff that they need, whatever your pet needs. Most pet owners take care of their pets. Uh, and how much more valuable are we than a dog or a cat or anything like that? God desires to take care of us and all of our needs. So whatever it is that you need in your life, maybe you're in a difficult uh, financial situation because of the virus. Maybe, you're, maybe you've been struggling even before the virus came along. But whatever your need is, whether that be finances, health, uh, family, social, whatever, whatever your problem is, God desires to bring in a new uh, provision for you. So in the Bible, it actually talks about how God provided for the Hebrews. Uh, the Hebrew people, they escaped Egypt. God, God delivered them out of Egypt. And when they were wandering in the desert for the 40 years, God provided their food daily. Six days a week, he gave them manna, which, which we believe was some sort of bread type thing. Uh, but it, it was manna, it was food from heaven. And every single day, except for the Sabbath, they were expected to go out and pick up, the, pick up the food that they required for one day. They were required to get the one day's food out of uh, the ground, or out of where the, the manna was. And if they gathered more than what they needed for the day, that food rotted. So God is expecting us to trust him. He's expecting us to trust him and believe him for uh, the provision in our life. The, uh, and on the, the sixth day, you know, the day before the Sabbath, they were expected to, to uh, harvest two days worth of food so that, you know, they could eat on the Sabbath. But God is expecting us to trust him. And he supernaturally provided for their needs. Uh, there was no way for them to do any sort of agriculture in the desert while they were wandering. 
there's not much to hunt in the desert. So uh, wandering around in the desert is a difficult lifestyle, especially for a people group as large as the, as the Hebrews. There would have been at least several hundred thousand of them wandering in the desert. If you've ever been to the desert, you know there's not much uh, to eat or drink out there. So the Lord provided for them during those 40 years. And if God can provide for 600,000 plus people uh, by giving them bread from heaven every day, God can provide for your needs too. So and there's an interesting concept that we see in the Bible uh, where God takes what we have, what we give to him, and he multiplies it. Uh, when we look at Jesus seeing the, feeding the 5,000, he didn't just make uh, bread and fish out of nothing. He had the two small loaves and the fish from the boy, and he took that that was given to him and he multiplied it. And there's this concept that God provides for people that give. God provides for people that give, and he multiplies that so that they can be provided for it. Uh, this, uh, this teaching has been misconstrued and uh, taught improperly a lot of times, especially on the TV, but God is desiring to take what you have and multiply it. So when you're in a difficult situation, this might sound counterintuitive, but I encourage if you're in a difficult financial situation, for example, give. Uh, give to someone else in need, and God will provide for you. God will provide. I've heard countless stories of uh, people taking their last $20 bill or the last $100 bill and giving to someone in need or giving to what God said get for them to give, and their financial need was taken care of. Their financial need was taken care of. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a supernatural thing. It's a, it's a, it's a God thing because in, in our natural minds, if we're down to our last bit, then we save that for ourselves and just try and hold on to that. Uh, this is actually a concept that we see in the scripture where the prophet uh, left and went up on the mountain for three years and the first person he ran to was a widow and there had been no rain for a long time. There, would be, there, had, been no, uh, there had been no crops and there, people were starving and, and dying. And the prophet goes up and says to the woman, woman, I'm hungry, give me food. And so... This, was, this woman, all she had left was enough for about one more meal, and she gave him her last bit of food. We would think that's crazy if we were in her position. I've only got enough food left for one more meal. Uh, I'm going to use it for me. Well, God honored that woman because God provided for that woman and gave them enough food uh, to live on for the next several years. She trusted God by giving the man of God uh, the food that he needed, the food that he wanted. And God provided for her. And it's such a topsy-turvy thing. The kingdom of God is actually topsy-turvy. It's upside down. Because everything that happens in the kingdom of God to the natural flesh mind doesn't make sense. Uh, we give and then we get more back. That doesn't make sense in our, in our earthly concept. But God desires to take care of your needs. And one thing that God does not want us to do is to worry. God does not desire for us to have a worrying mindset because worry is a form of fear. And we have been called to live lives of faith. And fear is the opposite of faith. If I'm in faith that something is going to happen, then I'm believing that something good will happen. If I'm in fear that something is going to happen, I'm believing for the worst. I'm expecting the worst if I have a fear about me. Uh, if you don't hear back from somebody for a few weeks, some people have the automatic fear, well, what if they're dead? What if they disappeared? What if they're kidnapped? I remember when I was a kid, uh, especially, you know, in my teenage years, I would be sleeping in my parents' house and I would think, what if there's someone at the front door right now? What if there's someone trying to break in? What if there's an animal trying to get in our house? And, and several nights a week, I would get up and I would go downstairs and I would look around, make sure everything was okay. And of course, everything was fine. Uh, but it was just my overactive imagination. Now, if I'd actually believed uh, legitimately that there was something going on, I would have checked it out, obviously. But when, I, when we live in this mindset of fear, of expecting the worst to happen, then it will interfere with your life. And sometimes expecting something causes it to happen. So we need to be in faith. We need to be in faith and believe God for the provision in your life to take place. If your attitude is, well, I applied to that job, but you know, I'm not going to get it. I just don't see it happening. I don't believe it's going to happen. Well, then you probably won't get it. Uh, because that's kind of how, that's just how things work. What we believe tends to be what happens. What we believe tends to be what happens. So God delights 
in doing the impossible. Did you know that? God delights in doing the impossible. Uh, God not only delights in fulfilling your needs, he likes doing it in, in impossible ways. Kind of like we discussed where uh, if, you want, if you have a need in your life, you give. And then God will multiply what you give and provide for your need. God delights in doing the impossible. Uh, some might say that God is uh, somewhat, somewhat of a show-off in some ways because he likes to uh, do things extravagantly sometimes. When, when the Israelites first escaped Egypt, they were headed towards uh, the desert, and in between Egypt and the desert was the Red Sea. And uh, the Egyptians began chasing uh, the Hebrews on their way to the desert. And the Egyptians had changed their mind. Originally, they let the Hebrews go, but then they changed their mind and said that we're going to go get them. Uh, we're going to bring them back and make them our slaves once again. Well, God could have done any number of things to, look, to deliver them from uh, the Egyptians. God could have uh, confused the Egyptians and made them go the wrong way, or God could have uh, done anything. He could have caused a sandstorm to block the Egyptians from being able to get to the Hebrews. But God was very extravagant. He sent a pillar of fire down uh, that, that blocked the Hebrews from the Egyptians, and he split the Red Sea in half, in two. You know, he, he made a tunnel, I guess you could say, in the Red Sea where it split it all the way through here and just where the Israelites could just keep walking. Uh, God, that's quite extravagant. We've seen that, most of us have seen that in a movie somewhere or another, but it was quite, a, quite an extravagant feat. And God enjoys doing things in impossible ways. Uh, we also see this in the story of David and Goliath. David would have been a... Uh, Israeli Hebrew uh, teenage boy, who knows, maybe 15. And uh, the Hebrews were maybe, on average, were maybe, you know, 5'1", 5'2", 5'3". They were not very tall people. And Goliath would have been, uh, it depends on who you ask, but Goliath would have been very large. He would have been somewhere between 8 to 11 feet, uh, somewhere in that range. So he was quite a bit larger than David. And for David to fight him in a one-on-one -on -one fight would have been an impossible task. A teenage boy against a seasoned giant warrior would not have gone well uh, for David, but God made it so that David ended Goliath in a single strike. He, he hit him with the stone on the head, and that was the end of uh, that story. God delights in doing things extravagantly. Uh, and like we mentioned, Jesus fed the 5,000. Jesus fed the 5,000 with two loaves and some fish. So, that's quite extravagant to take food and literally multiply it in front of everyone's eyes so that everyone can eat. That's an incredible miracle. Jesus' entire ministry was categorized by the impossible. Throughout that three, three and a half year period, Jesus raised the dead. Uh, he healed sick people that had been sick their whole life. He opened blind eyes. He opened deaf ears. Uh, he saw food multiplied. He walked on water. He stopped storms with his words. And many other things, I'm sure. But Jesus' entire ministry was categorized by the impossible. So what you're believing God for, I guarantee you he expects you to believe more. There's always more that he wants us to believe for. Maybe, uh, maybe your situation is just a miracle in the making. Maybe your impossible situation is just a setup for God to do a miracle. Maybe you owe an enormous amount of debt that you'll never get out of. God desires to do a miracle there. God desires to set you free from that. Uh, maybe you have uh, a health condition that has been crippling you for years. God desires to set you free from that. God desires to bring you life. Uh, God can give you a job that you shouldn't get. Uh, God can give you a job that you're not qualified for. Uh, it's just how that works. God desires to put us in places and to do things in our life that would be impossible on our own effort. Uh, Joseph in the uh, Joseph in the Bible, we see him going from being a son to a slave to a prisoner to the equivalent of the vice president of Egypt. He would have been the second most powerful man in the country. Joseph was not qualified for that position in the eyes of man. Joseph was not qualified to be the second in command because he had spent the last. Uh, we don't know exactly, but we, he had spent the last decade or two as a slave and as a prisoner. No one in our country goes from uh, 
we don't have slaves anymore, but no one in our country uh, goes from being slaves uh, to prisoners to presidents. That's not how that works. God took a man that was not qualified for the position and made him qualified. So God desires to do an impossible thing in your life. God desires to do an impossible thing in your life. And God is wanting you to start believing for it. Because faith is the access to God. When we believe God to do things, it enables us to receive a miracle from God himself. Uh, and you may ask, why is that? But God has actually given us dominion here. God has given us authority in this place. And God does what he wants. He has complete and total control over everything. But God enjoys seeing us invite him into our situations. God, God kind of respects our privacy and our decisions in that sense. And that God will often not intervene in a situation until he is invited to do so. And the way that we invite him to intervene in the situation is by believing and being in faith and praying and that kind of thing. So whatever your situation is, begin to believe God to turn it around. Begin to believe God to do a miracle in your life. So oftentimes, like I mentioned with when I was in Africa, uh, surprise provision has come in my life. Surprise provision has come in my life several times. I've either, uh, maybe I made a mistake and <clears throat> moved too much money out of an account and I needed money, but God has always uh, provided for me in every situation that I've needed his provision. He's always, I've always had a job when I needed a job. I've always had a place to live. Uh, I've always had food on the table. I've always had clothes on my back. God has always provided for me in every situation. I actually enjoy seeing the provision of God. It, I find a great deal of pleasure in seeing the Lord do uh, miraculous things in my life. I enjoy seeing God turn situations around that didn't look so good and make them uh, work out. And I encourage you today to learn to trust him. Learn to trust God that he will provide for you. And maybe you're watching and you already trust God quite well. You already believe him for many things in your life. You already are seeing his provision. Well, I encourage you, go deeper. Seek more. Seek God to do more things in your life. Because God wants to do more than just provide for you. He wants to use you to provide for other people. And the more blessed that you are, the more that uh, God can a is able to do through your life, the more he can bless other people. Because most people don't understand this, that they have to believe in God. They have to have faith for God to do a lot in their life. Sometimes that has to be done through you. People don't understand this, so they need to see it through you. They need to see that God is providing for you. God is doing things in your life, and, you're, and he's using that through your life to help them. So begin to believe God for bigger things. Some of you here watching or that will watch, God wants to do big things in your life to impact your community, uh, your city, your country, your world. God wants to do big things in your life. But you must allow him. You must help. You must let him do that in your life. You must believe him for it. Every every great man and woman of God that has done anything for the Lord throughout you know all of our history has had to believe God for big things. Uh, I'll mention this briefly. Heidi Baker showed up to uh, Mozambique, Africa, uh, about you know 25, 30 years ago. Showed up there with thirty dollars in her pocket with her husband and her, and her kid, uh, with no contacts. God, she had nothing other than God wanted you, God wanted her to go. And he, he said, go and go and do my will. And that's pretty much all they had. Go to Mozambique. They had $30, no contacts and knew and didn't know the language. Well, they showed up. Life was really hard. They had to believe God for a lot of stuff and they still do have to believe God for a lot of stuff. But now, uh, they feed, Last I heard, it was about 33,000 people annually. They have bases all over the world, and Mozambique in particular uh, is being changed from the inside out. The highest, they've opened two schools, and those are the two highest performing schools in the country. Uh, they've opened several orphanage, orphanages throughout the uh, country, and hundreds, maybe even thousands of kids uh, have had a place to live because of what God has done through their life. So never doubt what God can do in your life when you begin to believe for the impossible. And the more that you're willing to believe God for the impossible, the more that he'll do. The more that he'll do. If you already begin, if you already believe God for your needs, like I just said, believe him for more. Believe him to meet the needs of other people through you. 
Believe him to meet the needs of other people through you. This isn't just about me. This isn't just about you. This is about everybody. So believe God that he's going to provide for you and for all of us. So we'll finish with a word of prayer. But I just want to encourage you. Believe God that he will do what he says he'll do in his word. And that is to provide for you when you trust him. So Lord, we pray right now that we would just be encouraged by you. That we would be encouraged uh, knowing that you're a good God, that you uh, are capable, that you're able, and you're willing to provide for all our needs, that you're willing to provide for all the things that uh, show up in our life, that you're willing to trample over every problem that we come across, that we come across. And we worship you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you all have a good night.